Carnival's going to build bigger ships. Royal Caribbean's going to build smaller ships. And what the hell is going on with Princess? Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Report Cruise Update for August 2024. I know I'm a few days early, but I want to make sure I get this done before the end of the month because we're leaving town the first part of August and I just didn't want my schedule to interfere. So consider this the news update for August. Don't normally do cruise news. There are a lot of YouTube channels out there that specialize in that sort of thing. Lolita Loca, uh, Don's Family Vacations. Those are two that we watch. We also watch Morgan. We watch uh, Gary Bembridge. We're not a news channel. We focus and specialize in in-depth, detailed reviews of cruise ships, cruise ship dining, staterooms, the whole cruise experience, as well as destination information, hotels and resorts, but it's all kind of centered around cruising. And we review everything from the perspective of an adult couple traveling as a couple, not with a family, not kids, anything like that. So if that fits your style, you maybe have found the right place. Maybe you'd like to consider subscribing to our channel. Click that little subscribe button and uh, you'll see our videos when they come out. Now you'll notice I've got some notes here and they're all crinkled up. And the reason they're all crinkled up is because I thought I'd already done this video and when I got back to my computer to do some editing, I realized I hadn't turned on my main camera. I didn't set it to record. I was just recording on the B camera. So I'm going to do this a second time. I've already been through this once, but let's go through it again. Okay, I do think it's newsworthy, though, to talk about the idea or the notion that Carnival has decided to apparently uh, build a new class of ship, a bigger ship, holds up to 8,000 people. Personally, I'm not sure that's a, a wise decision, but then again, who am I? I think the cruise industry is in sort of a bubble right now. I think these bookings are just insane people everybody's booking cruises but i don't have as much faith in the economy as carnival obviously does i just don't know i just think there's a lot of different things come into play here that could really make this bubble burst i have five things that i think could make the bubble burst and i'm going to talk about that in a future video if you're interested the idea of these ships that hold 8,000 people doesn't really hold much appeal to us because we don't like crowds. I mean, we go on cruises and travel to get away from people. We aren't big fans of the huge ships because we don't really care about traveling with kids. And usually the bigger the ship, the more kids you're going to have, more families you're going to have, so on and so forth. But here's a reason I think the big ship idea might be a mistake for from a from a business perspective thinking as a cruise line out of 8000 guests and you figure there's probably what 2000 2500 maybe 3000 crew members that many people on board one ship what are the odds that's like a small town what are the odds that somebody in 7 days is going to have a serious medical event Maybe it's a heart attack. Maybe it's something that requires them to be offloaded at a port. And so now the ship has to divert uh, or they have to get a helicopter to come out. That's not always possible. A lot of times these ships have to go back to the port of embarkation or they have to go deviate to another port. So what that can mean is in a lot of cases, everybody on the ship's going to miss a port day because of this. If you had four 2,000 person or guest ships and one person out of the 8,000 has an event like that, only one out of four of those 8,000 people is going to be inconvenienced and their vacation is going to be disrupted. So I'm not so sure it's a great idea to have this many people on a ship because just for that one reason alone, not to mention the crowds. I understand the economies of scale. 
I understand that cruise lines are trying to keep cruising affordable, even though that's sort of gone out the window now. Royal Caribbean is going in a different direction. Apparently, they've announced recently they're going to start looking at building their next class of ships are going to be smaller ships. They're getting away from the Icon, Utopia size ships, and they're going to be looking at ships, from what I've heard, in that 3,000 to 3,500 guest range, which it, to, to us, that's a perfect size ship. Something like an edge class ship on Celebrity, uh, even Virgin Voyages, maybe a little bigger than that. But those size of ships, to me, that's plenty big. That's plenty people. Uh, you, you have a big enough ship where you can have all the facilities you could ever want. And I just, you know, I, I like that idea, that direction. We've kind of gotten away from Royal Caribbean over the last few years just because we really aren't that excited about going on a crowded ship that's 100%, it's at capacity, and capacity is 8,000 people. It's just not our style. We're adults. We travel by ourselves. We don't have kids, don't have families. The quieter and the less crowded, the better. So let me know in the comments down below, what do you think? What is your preference when it comes to the size of a ship. Is it bigger is better? 10,000, 20,000 people be fine with you? Let me know in the comments. Or do you like those 2,000 to 3,500 size ships? Or you could even go down to say something like Viking, where they have 900 people on the ship. I believe they're in the 900 range. Let's move on to Princess. What is going on with Sun Princess? I'll tell you what, they just announced this last week. And the reason I'm talking about this is because we're going to be going on Sun Princess in a little over a month, month and a half. And um, man, it just seems like every day there's some other uh, press release or something. Now they're saying that Park 19, which was the kind of entertainment venue on the top deck of the ship, it was going to have this thing called a sky ride where I guess you hang by your hands and you zip around the ship like a kind of like an extended zip line is what it looked like. I'm sure you have a harness on, but yeah, I think it'd be safe. I would probably try it just to say I did it. And then they were going to have a ropes course and none of that's going to happen now. None of that's going to happen. They've, they've canceled it because there was some safety issue or they didn't get approval or certification from some government agency somewhere or they did some testing and maybe they, I don't know, maybe somebody got hurt on the sky ride. I don't know. But I don't understand the ropes course not being there because every ship has a ropes course. Every big ship has a ropes course, seems like. And we've done a couple of ropes courses. We thought they were a lot of fun. So this is going to really maybe change the dynamic of Sun Princess. And, you know, this ship from day one has just had issues. And we're really curious. And that's why we put our crews off until September. We wanted to make sure they got all these things ironed out. When the ship first came out, number one, they delayed the inaugural by one or two weeks. And they had to push everybody that was booked the second week to the third week. And they had to go through all this gyration because once you miss a week now everybody that was booked for the next week has to be moved back a week and people got on board the ship for the inaugural and a lot of stuff wasn't finished a lot of restaurants weren't open yet there were complaints about service levels uh, some people don't like the fact that the buffet on sun princess is different because they serve you the food as opposed to self-serve we actually like that. We much prefer a buffet where a thousand or two thousand people aren't touching all the utensils. I'd much rather have the crew put the food on my plate. Some people want to pile it on themselves. I don't care. I'd rather have it be safer, cleaner, and it, it just creeps me out when you've got all these people. I've seen kids walk up and grab rolls and then turn around and put it back. Yeah, I want everything behind glass. I want the crew to serve me. That's just me. Let me know in the comments. Do you agree with that? Do you like self-service buffets? Or would you prefer to have the crew serve you? I think not only is it a little classier, a little more elegant to have somebody serve me as opposed to me just go through a, you know, a, a cattle call, you know, cattle line and serve myself a feeding frenzy. There are a lot of things weren't ready. Restaurants weren't ready. Entertainment venues weren't 
open. They didn't even have any entertainment in the first couple of cruises, or very little entertainment. So they had all kinds of issues, and every it seems like there's been issues ever since this ship was introduced. And I don't know who was in charge of the Sun Princess, the the planning, and now they're changing uh, all of their. They're going from signature class and reserve collection, signature collection. Now they're changing it to a, a, a sanctuary class or something. I mean. It's very confusing. And as a consumer, as a cruiser, I don't like confusion. I like to know when I get on board what is going to be available, what can I book. I... There have been problems with the app. We've tried to book dining reservations. We've been, I think we've been successful. I know we got charged for them, so I'm assuming we got, we were successful. We do have the Princess Premier package, which I'm looking forward to trying that out and reviewing that for you to let you know if if we think it's worth it, because it's uh, fairly expensive. So we'll let you know all about that once we get on that. That's not till September. We're on the transatlantic. It's a longer cruise, so we're going to have a lot of time to explore the ship and explore all these things. Now, as far as the Park 19 thing being disabled. It's no longer going to be there. As far as that goes, I'm not sure if that's going to be good for us as adult travelers or bad for us. It could be good because maybe some people that were traveling with families and they were looking forward to that, maybe they'll cancel their cruise and we'll have fewer kids on board. Maybe. The other thing is maybe we'll have the same number of kids on board and there'll be nothing for them to do and they'll be in our way the whole time. So I'm not sure if it's a good thing for adult travelers that don't really want to travel with lots of kids around or a bad thing. We'll just have to wait and see. Let me know in the comments what you think of that. <clears throat> Are we being mean and evil because we don't want to travel with kids? Well, maybe so, but we like our space. We like our peace and quiet. You know, Princess is changing its, its, its direction. They're getting out of their lane of what we knew Princess to be. Princess was always kind of an adult cruise line. And now they've shifted into this family cruise. They're going after the family business and a younger crowd. I, get, I understand some of that. I, from a business standpoint, I understand it. But it's obvious they didn't think this through very well because there's so many things that are changing and so many things weren't ready. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Am I crazy? Now, before we go on Sun Princess in September, we're going to be going next month on Silver Sea's new Silver Ray. Unlike Sun Princess, talk about two ends of the spectrum. Unlike Sun Princess, this ship only holds 728 people, I think, or 726. Much smaller ship, much more intimate probably will be mostly adults. There may be some kids, because Silver Sea allows kids, but it's usually an adult crowd. There's really not that much for the kids to do. There's no arcades. There are no water slides. There's no rock climbing walls. There's no ropes course. It's pretty much a elegant luxury experience, and we've always loved Silver Sea, always had a great time. We'll be flying into Venice a day before the cruise. Venice, not the easiest place to fly into if you're spending the night before the cruise because you got to figure out how to get from the airport to your hotel, and since Venice is really an island with a bunch of canals, uh, the airport's on kind of the mainland, and you got to get from there over to Venice, and it's a little confusing. Silver Sea, a little confusing too, because in some documentation I've read says, the ship says it is leaving from Fusina, which is part of the mainland. It's on the mainland. And we've read reports and everything we find says that that's what cruise ships have to do now. Venice is no longer allowing cruise ships to dock in Venice. You have to go over to the mainland in Fusina. So we got to get from Venice over to Fusina. But then the last thing we got from Silver Sea, our booking documents, our ticket, our cruise ticket says that we embark in the passenger, cruise passenger terminal in Venice, which is actually on the island. I mean, there are docks there because cruise ships used to dock there, but they kind of have this anti-cruise sentiment now in Venice, like a lot of cities and destinations around the world are getting. And they've shoved everybody over to Fusina, which is on the mainland. Well, we don't know. 
We'll, we'll know when we get there. I know we check in in the cruise passenger terminal. Whether or not we embark the ship there or not remains to be seen. I'll let you know in our daily cruise blog. And if you aren't aware of it, go to our website. Make sure you bookmark it. We'll be blogging every day from Silver Ray as well as Sun Princess in September. And we will be posting regularly to our Facebook and Instagram at Cruise Report. Make sure you follow us so that you get all the information. And when you go to our cruisereport.com homepage, you'll see Silver Ray. You can't miss it. It will take up the whole homepage. You'll be able to click right through to our daily cruise blog. It's very, very easy to get our information. And it is a, a written blog every day with pictures of what we did that day, or actually the day before, because we post for, for what we did the previous day. Silver Ray will be spending a night in Venice. We'll let you know all about that. Uh, getting from the airport to the hotel, we looked at the buses, we looked at private cars, we had the hotel quote us a price for a private car, we looked at doing the water taxis. There's a water taxi you can go from the airport to the hotels for 15 euros, pretty cheap. The problem is it takes an hour and 45 minutes to get to the ho to our hotel from that from the airport. And a lot of people complain about the service on these water taxis. And if it's raining and there's bad weather, there's issues. So we just decided to do the luxury experience all the way and book a transfer, a private car transfer from Marco Polo International. I guess it's international, Marco Polo Airport in Venice directly to our hotel with Black Lane. Now, Black Lane is a international limousine company and they basically contract with all kinds of local limousine services and but they have a central booking location blacklane.com you go there and they're a partner of silver seas in fact if you book a silver sea cruise and you book their door-to-door -door service which basically from the time you walk out the door of your home until you step on board the ship they use black lane to pick you up at your home take you to the airport and then when you arrive back at your home airport they have a, a driver there to meet you and take you home it's a great service I'll put a link in the description down below if you're interested. And we'll let you know what our experience is with Black Lane after they've hopefully picked us up at the airport. What's nice about it is you get off the plane, you've been up for 12 or 14 hours or however long you've been awake because there's time changes, five hour time difference, six hours, jet lag, you're tired, you get off that plane. Do you really want to deal with a water taxi? You don't want to negotiate with a local taxi driver or deal with buses. You really just want to get to the hotel. This way, somebody will meet and greet us at the airport after we get out of baggage claim. Hopefully, there'll be a driver there with a sign with our name on it, and we will be whisked right off into the car or the van, whichever the case may be, and just taken to the hotel. Don't have to think about it. It's all taken care of. And when you're going on something like Silver Sea, it's a luxury cruise experience. So why not do it right all the way through? So anyway, that's kind of our thought. And that's why we decide we'll just go ahead and book a car with Black Lane. That's who Silver Sea uses. And we've used them in the past. It's been a few years, but we have used Black Lane in the past. So we'll let you know all about that experience. We'll let you know about the hotel that we're staying at in Venice. I don't want to talk about it right now, but after we've stayed there, we will blog about it. You'll know all that, all that we know. And then, of course, when we board Silver Ray, we will update you. And if the Wi-Fi permits, now we'll be doing Instagram and Facebook every day all along throughout the cruise. So you'll be getting photos, uh, reels, shorts on YouTube. You'll be getting videos and, and photos the whole time, every day, throughout the day. And then, of course, our daily cruise blog. But if Wi-Fi permits, we may actually do a couple of videos right from the ship, maybe even a live video if the Wi-Fi permits. That takes quite a bit of bandwidth. We'll just have to see how that works. So anyway, um, that's it for now. That's everything. Let me know in the comments what you think of the video. Uh, if you like the video, please do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. 
Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Click that subscribe button down below. The thumbs up really does help our YouTube channel. And until I see you from Silver Ray uh, or from Venice, smooth sailing.